Hi and welcome to my video blog. I'm here with my new digital storage oscilloscope, the Hantec 5000 series, the 5202B. I'm going to unpack it and just try to see what I bought. Here we go. We have the box with the scope. And just see what we got here. Okay, we've got the power cord. It's the main plug. Uh, we've got the packing list. Okay, we've got the, the scope, two probes, uh, the power cord, the C. I think maybe there's some kind of software inside. Uh, the warrant card, the certificate and uh, USB cable. Okay, um, so um, maybe this is the warranty card. Yes, warranty card. Uh, obviously, this is from Hong Kong, so there's some kind of Chinese. Uh, writing and um, okay we have of course two probes is the 150 80 slash 150 200 oscilloscope probe kit I've got two of them okay I've got the USB code but I don't need it and here is the big guy. Just throw away this. Oh, we've got the Intec ES5202B. Just open it. It, it looks like there isn't uh, a user manual. There's not a uh, any extraction in there, so maybe it can be quite weird to start to use this. Let's check out the probes. Inside we've got a, um, a sheet is a per 10, per 1 attenuation probe with 200 megahertz bandwidth and the peak voltage of 200 volt DC or 600 volt for the per 10 as a standard probe I think maybe the cable is a little thin respect to brain one um, we have the hook to just probe the circuit We've got the tip, this kind of sharp tip and the alligator here for the ground. We also got the, a screwdriver maybe to uh, yes, maybe to adjust the, the capacitance and the uh, regulation and a few rings to see what the two rows are. Let's power it up. I have already done the basic calibration. It took about 15 minutes to calibrate. It says 200 megahertz, one giga sample per second. Uh, I want to show you the basic utility. We have the system information. We're talking about the software version 3.40. Maybe if you uh, have one brand new, you have uh, uh, a smaller number here because there is a new version available in the website of uh, Haintech. Uh, it's an update, a firmware update. You have the firmware update too. Uh, an important thing that uh, I tried uh, before is the safe waveform 
tool. You can save a picture of the screen in directly into a USB. It's very fast and I think very useful. And this is the calibration. And I obviously don't want to calibrate it now, so I exit. You can have uh, the beep on the keyboard that is this beep here. Unfortunately, there there is so only um, unfortunately there's only English language or some kind of Chinese Japanese language like that. I don't know. You can change the guy color to green, pink, yellow, blue or black. I like it black. And set up timer, uh, check uh, the status of the system. And uh, you can also have uh, some other option. Unfortunately, I don't know very well what this option are because uh, there isn't uh, a manual. I, I, I don't have any instruction how to use this uh, button here. So let's try to see a signal here. Okay, just check the coupling. We are in the C. We have a 20 MHz bandwidth limitation. I don't know very well how this works because I don't have the manual mm, shipped in the box. But who cares? It's default limit on. We got the course wall division that is uh, 1, 2, 5 uh, uh, millivolt, 20 millivolt, and so on. Okay, so you can see. There is uh, something uh, going on here, maybe. We've got... Ooh! We've got some 20 millivolt. 2 millivolt per division. There's something here. I don't know very well what is. So I hook up the... the probe with the alligator to see if... Okay. It go to zero. It's kind of noisy here, but you know, we've got two millivolt per division, so it's less than half a millivolt. It's just okay. It's not brand. It's not a, a, a very important brand intake. So we we've, we've got a good thing with the uh, uh, one minimal noise. Less than one minimal noise. Okay, so let's hook up to the basic one kilohertz five volt square wave and here we are. Okay, so how to set it uh, quite well the how to set we have got the five volt one kilohertz um, with measure you can see is 1 kilohertz is peak to peak 5.28 volts maybe if I acquire with an average I can smooth out this uh, measure uh, no, it's 5.12 volts it's not quite precise it's quite flat on top Maybe I want to see how is the waveform down here. You, you can see there's some strange behavior here. I don't know if it's the pro of or if it's the 1 kilohertz wave. I really don't know. Okay, just I try to invert it and see in the top if there's also yes there's also in the top I don't know what it is it's maybe it's the square wave is not too precise maybe the probe is not so compensated so uh, I don't know but okay what I've got here is an Arduino Uno that is 
connected my laptop with a USB cable just for power and I've got a, a, a hundred percent sorry I've got an hundred point duty cycle on P991 to see if this square wave is better than the standard one kilohertz square wave from my scope and I'm gonna hook up the probe to the Arduino so I need the ground here with the alligator clip and also I need the, the line spin that is it is obviously a PV, PWM pin and here we are ok mm, we should have a uh, 5 volt peak to peak square wave I just want not to be inverted just acquire no average ok so we got 2 volt per division is 2 4 and a half is 4 5 5 volt it seems quite okay uh, of course we've got again 5.12 volts per division maybe there's some calibration I need to redo now and I want to see if there's the strange waveform down there and yes it is there's something going on here maybe if I mm, lim don't limit 20 MHz bandwidth is better mm, there's some strange things maybe it's the probe doing anything it's just losing a, a little trigger so here we have the scope and I'm trying to save the waveform to the USB ok just trigger here uh, you know the pot's not too not well made I, I, I have to turn very very slow to move fast and turn very fast to move slow, I don't know why it's, I think if I move very fast I want to move very fast if I move slow I want to move slow I don't know, maybe it's something going on with this pot mm, also the posi vertical position of each of this track the vertical of these two at a horizontal position have a very bad now but I don't like it so much it's bah. but of course you can uh, just push it to, to bring the track to the zero so it's quite useful it's a standard uh, front panel for, for an oscilloscope with you you can also use an external trigger but I don't have one so I can't show you how to use it uh, we can go to the trigger menu to see if we can change trigger and we have got edge trigger I want a falling trigger so this waveform is going to shift on the left to the falling edge and it's ok we, we got it I want, uh, of course, uh, an AC coupling, but you know, I, I can do now is 0 to 5 volts, so I can shift vertically the waveform. Um, so let's say this standard trigger menu, I don't know what video is. about maybe some kind of scope for video signal there now I want to try to store this waveform and put this here to my USB I put it in 
Okay, USB device detected. And uh, I just go to utility, save waveform. And saving way to USB, please wait. Waiting. A successful. So, let's go and see if we can read this waveform in our PC. Alright. Um, now I'm going to see if the wafer is safe in the pen drive. I've got the pen drive here. Peak 3.1. And uh, okay, we've got it. We've got a bitmap and a, a GIF. So that's it.